During our previous travels to the Imperial City, we'd stopped a spell at the fabled Tiber Septum Hotel in the Talos Plaza district. Inside, we'd met the retired mage, Antus Vannon, deep within his mug, who greets. Antus Vannon, retired. Sleep late and read trashy books. I don't keep up with the mage's guild affairs anymore. When asked about Daedra shrines, he would impart his knowledge of the three local altars, two of which we'd explored previously. The third, an altar to the Daedra Hercene. The Hersheen Shrine is south of town, northeast of Breville, between the Upper Nibbon and the Green Road. You too. Exiting the city, we begin our search for the Shrine of the Lord of the Hunt. Peering over a minor incline, we find a statue gazing contemptuously over the Imperial City. Inside the clearing, we see three worshippers in various states of deference to a duo of statues. The statue to the left depicts a wolf standing next to a humanoid figure to its right that depicts the body of a man with the head of a stag and a spear in its left hand, which, as an aside, is a bittersweet sight in Oblivion, being that spears were ultimately removed as a weapon class in the game post Morrowind as one of the many streamlining design choices. Approaching the nearest worshipper, the Argonian sharpshooter Hunting Tail, as he stares off at civilization, and cryptically turns to Cher. You found this place. Now you must find your way within. Likewise, the nearby Bosmer on the bench, Borneth, the wood elf hunter, sternly warns. This ground is sacred. Show respect. And finally, the Khajiit hunter, Vajira, spins to question. You approach the shrine of Hercene. Are you hunter or are you prey? We can then respond either... The way you're looking at me, I feel I am prey right now. Then leave here. Run away. Run away quickly. Come back when you are worthy. Otherwise, we can proudly declare I am a hunter. Do you think yourself a hunter? Then approach the shrine of Hercene. Leave our lord an offering. Leave an offering of the pelt of a bear or the pelt of a wolf at the shrine, and Hercene may find you worthy. Or perhaps you will learn what it is to be the hunted. Speaking of hunted, why do you worship in such a remote area? The city guard not fond of your pastime? We threaten no one. Why can't they just leave us alone? Sounds pretty prey-like to me. You stand on holy ground. Her quest and updates... Hercene's followers have told me that in order to summon the Daedra, I must leave an offering of a wolf or bear pelt at the statue. You must be level 17 to begin this quest. We then see our paint horse making its way down the hill, clearly spooked by the hunter's ominous energy, which we soon learn is not for naught. Travelling northwest over the old bridge in search of wolves and or bears for their prized pelts, we ourselves are pelted by an unexpected arrow set loose by a Dunma archer, our horse paying for his treachery. Show! With a half dozen arrows peppering our prey, we lift his Daedric, we lift the bandit bowman's Daedric bow of his corpse in anticipation for the hunt ahead, and have a moment for our fallen steed. The black and white lines of huntsman and prey already seeming blurred. Speaking of prey, between Kavach heading east along the path to Castle Skingrad, we then fell our first wolf. which are found from level 1 in all types of terrain, bar swamps and rainforest. Skinning it for its pelt, we then begin our hunt for the more dangerous bear. It should be noted, bears being large, hostile creatures known to attack if the player is found infringing on their territory and are typically found in the wilderness or caves. We had happened across our first black bear variant, which spawns at level 9 onwards when exploring Fort Blackboot and in the midst of running from a particularly incensed Frost Atronach.
Before we return to the shrine, it should be noted for the more avid hunter. Not long ago, when we were trekking atop a remote plateau in the northwest portion of the Dural Mountains, we attempted to gain favour of the Daedra Hermaeus Mora and were unexpectedly turned away, which we'll explore later why. However, we spied in the distance a mighty creature loitering on the path. As such, brown bears are encountered as early as level 16 and unlike their earlier variation, are much stronger and larger in comparison. Apart from caves and forested regions, they are found in areas of snow and higher altitudes, such as the Jural Mountains. With the man-eater destroyed, we can skin the beast of its precious pelt. With multiple first offer from fair kills, we return to the shrine of her scene, and with our sacrifice accepted, he evaluates. Summoned by prey, the hare crouches before the fox's muzzle. Perhaps I shall task you, mortal, sent you to hunt for my amusement. In Arcane Grove is a quarry worthy of the chase. First named, last tamed. The unicorn runs wild there. Bring me this creature's horn, mortal, if you dare. Stepping away from the shrine, Vajira ominously shares. You have been graced with the presence of Hercene. Do not fail him, lest you be hunted for the rest of your days. We tremble beneath his eye. We then note in our journal, after I made the required offering, Hercene was summoned and spoke to me. He told me that he desires the horn of a unicorn. I may be able to find a unicorn in the Harkane Grove. Just over the undulating hills to the south, we're guided by a young deer who whimsically bounds towards what we assume is the Harkane Grove. However, we're unsure if right now we're prey or the hunter. A question is soon answered when we see the familiar bulk of a sizable minotaur in the distance, and so we cautiously douse our torch before approaching. Down in the valley, behind the safety of a tree, we then peer into the grove to find it's not just one minotaur, but a trio tirelessly patrolling the area. It's then we make out in the dark a ghostly white horse-like figure standing firm amidst the pack, as if they are under its sway. And so we begin to back up and spin to see a troll waiting for us in the shadows. With the troll dead, we survey the area and see above a black bear enter, as if the woodland creatures are called by this unicorn supernatural presence. However, before we can contend with the mystical mare, we need to cull its entourage. With all three of its protectors removed, the unicorn starts to buck and gallop, surely enraged by our intrusion, and it somehow spies us from afar. The horned horse then charges, and we swing our steel sword to find it does nothing. Bar enraged the creature further. Now, it should be noted before we attempt again to kill this magical beast, let's first look at what happens if we were to try and ride it, and then how to actually kill it, and finally, the tragic truth of what killing this unicorn may mean for the Elder Scrolls lore as a whole. 
The unicorn can be ridden like a regular horse and used as a free mount. That is, if you can sneak up on it and mount it. Or there is another way which it can be ridden which I will soon outline. The unicorn is equivalent to a white horse in speed, has a very powerful attack, and is resistant to several types of attack and reflects damage. Unfortunately, it will attack almost anyone or anything wielding a weapon, including fists, and will not stop attacking until its target is dead. This means that the unicorn will attack monsters, enemies, allies, and even you in most cases. Accidentally pulling out a weapon at any time or raising your fists, even to defend the unicorn, will lead to you being attacked. However, the unicorn may not attack you if its disposition is sufficiently high, for example, if you have high fame. Curiously, the unicorn does not react to destruction or conjuration magic, so it may be a more suitable mount if you were the mage class. Furthermore, if you do not want the unicorn as your horse, it is recommended to not mount it. The minute you mount it, the unicorn will replace your old horse and every time you fast travel, the unicorn will be used as your mount. What's that? Your presence here will not be tolerated. A few other handy facts include you should not ride the unicorn when you have followers, because if they draw their weapon to fight enemies, the unicorn will become hostile. The unicorn does not count towards your horse's own statistic. You cannot purchase horse armor for the unicorn. And when you're not riding the unicorn, it will return to the Harkane Grove. So, the question then is, how do we kill the seemingly infallible unicorn for her scene? Well, the unicorn can be challenging in a fight because it has a strong attack, multiple resistances, and reflect damage abilities as seen on screen, which means magics and enchanted weapons may be the best course of action. However, the unofficial wiki shares some options for killing the unicorn, including some options that do not require actually killing it yourself, including, but not limited to, using the Wapajack on the unicorn, which can turn it into a weaker creature, Bring essential followers to share your combat duties. You can ride the unicorn to a town and place the unicorn in the paddock next to the town's stable. You can then freely attack the unicorn from outside the stable with ranged attacks and it will not be able to hurt you. Ride the unicorn to an oblivion gate or any other location with hostile creatures or NPCs and let the enemies attack the unicorn for you. As long as you do not draw your weapon, the unicorn will engage anyone who is attacking. Conversely, lead an attacking creature slash NPC to the unicorn. <laughs> I'm just warming up, you pathetic worm or ride the unicorn off a bridge or cliff into deep water. The momentum will ensure you plunge beneath the water's surface and remain underwater using water breathing on yourself until the unicorn drowns. Do not dismount as the unicorn will automatically swim to the surface and riding into the water from the water's edge does not work because you cannot go underwater as needed. Perhaps the most readily available method is simply to repeatedly leap off cliffs slash down hills while riding the unicorn until it dies from fall damage. When finally killed, we can then cut the unicorn's prized horn from its head as a reward for her scene, though this horn may be worth more than we know, and I'll soon explain why. However, returning to the shrine, the Daedric Lord of the Hunt greets. Yes, Hunter, make your offering. Did you taste its flesh and drink its blood? Never waste the spoils of a kill. You've pleased me, Hunter. Take my token, and wear it well. Hereafter, take your prey, and whisper my name. 
A journal then updates, Hersin was impressed with my skill in hunting the unicorn. He has rewarded me with the savior's hide. The armor itself, true to its name, being fashioned from a pelt that looks similar to the gifts that we had bequeathed the Daedric Lord with. And the light armor curious boasts resist magic 25%. But was it all worth it to kill this magical creature? Greetings, favored of Hersin. Good hunting, hide wearer. Well, this unicorn we had killed specifically is mentioned in Soren's journal as part of the Wild Horse's creation for the Skyrim Special Edition, where it is revealed to be the last living unicorn. Reading, Journal of Soren Harrickson, Wildlife Scholar, 14th of Rain's Hand 4E201. In my duty to document all living creatures in Skyrim, the long-lost unicorn has never been far from my mind. It is said that long ago, the very last of its kind was sacrificed to her scene. And although there are supposed sightings of more unicorns later in the book, perhaps it's by our very hand and her scene's whim, we drove this mythical creature to extinction.